The message you're about to listen to is a message from Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Eric Nyamiche preaches the gospel in its simplest form to help the believers walk in Christ and also how the believer relate with his world. This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn from Apostle Eric Nyamiche and be a blessing to the world. If you are new to this page, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so that when new videos are uploaded, you can have access to it. Make sure you go to our own page and check out for more videos. Thank you. So Jeremiah walked away. And then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. Go back and tell Hananiah that he has prophesied falsehood in my name. So he is going to die. Within two months, Ananiah was gone. He was dead. Then the word of God came to Jeremiah. Let's go to Jeremiah 29. Then let's take the reading again. Jeremiah 29. Build houses and settle down. This is a prophecy he received from the Lord. And then he wrote the prophecy. And then he sent it to those in Babylon and in exile. To the elders and the priests and the prophets and all those Jews who were in exile in Babylon. He received a prophecy and he wrote it and he sent it. I think that recently when we were saying that, when it comes to the election of chairman and IMD and the general secretary, we don't want direct prophecies again on the floor of the house because sometimes it creates confusion. So even if you have prophecy right, people say they have never heard it before. That is the Bible. Mm -hmm. Or if you like, let me read it, verse 1. This is the test of the letter that the prophet Jeremiah sent from Jerusalem to the surviving elders among the exiles and to the priests and to the prophets and all the other people in the book of Nehazah are carried into exile from Jerusalem. From verse 3. Then verse 4. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says to all those I carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. So what he wrote is what the Lord has said. Do you get what I'm, I'm saying? See, God can speak to you in prophecy in your house before you come to church. So that when you come here, you can just bring the prophecy. He has spoken to you already. He spoke to him and he wrote and he sent it out. But he said, this is what the Almighty says. Build houses. Verse 5. And settle down. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Marry and have sons and daughters. Find wives for your sons and give your daughters into marriage so that they too may have sons and daughters. Why? Why is he saying that now? Marry. Start farming. Build houses. Why? Verse 10. Shall we read verse 10 together if you have? This is what the Lord says. When 70 years are completed for, I will come to you and fulfill my good promise to back to this place. This is the word of the Lord. So how many years are they going to be there? 70 years. So this is against what Hanani was saying that two years. So if they are going to be there for 70 years, then he says that start marrying. Well, you are not going to live anytime soon. You are going to be there for a long time. So build houses. Decide to stay because it's going to be 70 years of exile. This is the word of the Lord. Then he said this in verse 7. Shall we go back to verse 7? Because you are going to live there for a while. This is what he said. Also, seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. You are going to be there for a long time. Seek their prosperity. And he says that pray to the Lord for it. Because if it prospers, you too will prosper. Prosper. 
this one is going to give a different attitude to what Hananiah was saying and the other prophets were prophesying. If you are saying that Nebuchadnezzar is wicked, God is going to deliver us and God is going to pay back Nebuchadnezzar. Just as he did to, to Pharaoh. When you wake up and you are in Ezra, will you pray for Nebuchadnezzar? Won't you be cursing Babylon? He says, stop cursing Babylon. If you curse Babylon, you eat the curse. But when you bless Babylon, you eat the blessing. You are going to be there for a while. Babylon's prosperity will be your prosperity. Brothers, we can teach about tithe. Just as we have been doing. But when there's no money in the nation, where will you get the money to tithe? Ghana's prosperity is our prosperity. Her peace is our peace. Now our brothers and sisters from China are here. Some of them are bleeding because their parents are there. Their friends are there. When I called our church in China some two weeks back, for two months, they had not gone to church. Two months. How will you go when there is no peace in the land? How will we come to church? So don't think that we are doing our own business. We are doing the business in the nation. Don't curse Ghana. I called Italy last week. And last week, you know that it was Lord's Supper Day. And for us, we cherish that day. And sadly, the national head told me that tried as they did, the members did not come to church. You see, the devil said that everyone will do anything possible to save their soul. So the members are also saving their souls. They will not come to church. Don't think that this nation is there for naught. And that is your business is your own business. No, it is not. The relevance of the church, it is in her blessing to the nations. When politicians are doing equalization, we should tell them the truth. That stop doing these things. Don't destroy our nation for us. If you don't love the nation, why did you stand for the constituency leader? Let's tell them. Because when they destroy it, we will eat it. In their prosperity, you also prosper. Shall we bow down our heads for a moment? Begin to think about this and say a prayer for Ghana. It's a prayer for Ghana. Say a sincere prayer. And if you are a type who love to curse the land, despite the nation, I want you to repent of that one too. Amen. Can I please ask you to rise? And I want you to read this. Let's read Zachariah. Zachariah. Zechariah chapter 4. So he said to me, This is the word of the Lord. To Zerubbabel. Not by might. Nor by power. But by my spirit, says the Lord. You remember that in Jeremiah, he says, pray unto the Lord. He has the hearts of kings in his hands. Pray to Jehovah, the omnipotent. He can turn situations around. Sometimes when we see hopelessness, don't think that God cannot change situations around. He turns things around. He says that it's not going to be by might, nor by power, by that by my spirit. Verse 7 is what I need. What are you, mighty mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you become level ground. All mountains, I pray in the name of Jesus. That is standing against the prosperity of the land. Let it become a level ground in Jesus' name. Then he will bring out the capstone.
to shouts of God bless it. God bless it. Now, just imagine Ghana. Just project that flag. And I want you to lift up your hands. Say, God bless Ghana. Ghana. Now, I want you to do that. Don't let me say what you want. Bless the nation. Bless it. Don't curse it. In a prosperity, you also prosper. In a prosperity, you will prosper. In a prosperity, you will prosper. Let's pray peace upon the land. I want to put some pictures into your soul. That is why I'm doing all this. I pray a total change, a shift from cursing our land to blessing it. Zerubbabel went back home to go and build the temple. Challenges were there. And the Bible says that, what do you see, Zerubbabel? What do you see? What do you see? It's never going to be by might nor by power. It's going to be built by my spirit. He says that, and then begin to shout. And bless the land. Say, God bless it. God bless it. The King James says that peace be unto the land. Peace be unto the land. And then the angel said, Zerubbabel's hand has begun it. This same hand will complete it. Shall we please sit? Kayemo Satan. God bless our homeland, Ghana. And make our nation great and strong. God bless this land. Make our nation great and strong. Then he moved on to say that I know the plans that I have for you. Not of evil. I don't want to harm you. But to bring you to an expected end. God has plans for every nation. When it was about 70 years, a boy who by this time is about 80 plus, Daniel, in Daniel chapter 9, was reading about Jeremiah. And reading Jeremiah, as you say. And then he realized that Jeremiah prophesied that the Ezra will span 70 years. And it was almost 70 years. And then he entered into prayer. And he started praying. His prayer was petitioning God that God forgive our fathers. Forgive the sins of our fathers. Daniel chapter 9. Let's go to Daniel chapter 9. Let's start from verse 1. We'll do. In the first year of Darius, son of Zazas, who was made ruler over Babylon or the Babylonian kingdom. So we are still in Babylon, still in Ezra. Daniel was also part of the Ezra. And now he is praying that God will bring deliverance. In the first year, let's move to verse 2. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood from scriptures, according to the word of the Lord given to Jeremiah the prophet, that the desolation of Jerusalem will last 70 years. Verse 3. So I turn to the Lord. Do you remember that Jeremiah says that pray to the Lord for it? And pleaded with him in prayer and petition in fasting and in sackcloth and in ashes. I pray to the Lord my God and confess, Lord, the great and awesome God who keeps the covenant of love with those who love him and keep his commands. The next verse. What is that word? The first one. First one. First one. But you see, I love Daniel. He's a humble man. He was not suffering in Babylon. 
it was made to even oversee the leaders of the various provinces in Babylon. He was a rich man. Powerful in spirit, sharp in the mind, but he identified with his people who are suffering. If you are listening to me and watching me at home, don't think that because you live in a good suburb and you do a good job, when there's trouble in the land, you escape. No. We are all involved. That is a song our Sang. We are all involved. He says, We have sinned and done wrong. See, when people are living the sin, especially politicians, if you have to wake Dr. Kwame Nkrumah up, he tell me, he say, please tell us what are some of your regrets. He will tell you certain secret things that no Ghanaian knows. He will tell you certain things. Where they went for the Kankan Yami. How he would just imprison his colleagues and refuse them bail and release. Some of them just died like that. He didn't stop with him. We have all seen how our former president were put on stake and killed in the name of corruption, yet the country is still corrupt. So, what was the use killing those people? If they were around, they could have offered good counsel. At least from the past, they could have given us some wisdom. The sin of the land. Just recently, three Ghanaian girls were killed. We found their remains somewhere. And the parents were bleeding. Father, forgive the sin of the land. It is not just about the leaders. Even in churches, we hear occultic powers ruling and people posed to be pastors. But I've been hearing that they even bury things as foundations. The kind of wicked things that go on even in churches. Father, forgive us and save our land. Father, don't turn your face away from us. Be merciful. Kings are involved in destroying the very water bodies that they are supposed to survey. Politicians are involved in destroying the very water bodies because they want money now. They don't care about Ghana's tomorrow. God, forgive us. Small boys will go and bathe in these waters and they will have the hands here. Some of them will get sick and go to the premature grave because of certain people who wants to have the whole Ghana on their hands. God have mercy. He prayed and in his prayer, Gabriel descended and he brought him good news. May the Lord descend and bring us good news. You see, 2 Peter 1 verse 3 says that his divine power has given us all that we need for life and for godliness. When God gave us our boundary, he gave us everything we needed in this nation for life. He may not have given us certain things that America had, but he has given us what we also have so that we will be dependent on one another. But what is happening now? God created man and he made man a manager. Genesis 2.15. Shall we read Genesis 2.15, please? The Lord God took man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. This means that the human being is a manager of what God has given her. Now, when you don't manage what God has given you, you lose it. I want you to repeat that after me. When you don't manage what God has given you freely, you will lose it. In Luke chapter 16, verse 1, please. Luke 16, 1. Jesus told his disciples, 
there was a rich man whose manager was accused of wasting his possession. So the, he, a rich man made somebody a manager and the man was wasting his possession. God has given us timber. He has given us gold. He has given us diamond. He has given us good water and water bodies. God has blessed us with a lot of things. Plus human beings with sharp minds. But if we don't manage all these things well, we will lose it. The things will spoil. The things will corrupt. So when we are talking about corruption, it is lack of management of what God has given us. It stems from two things. It stems from one, incompetency. Because we are supposed to manage what God has given us. But if you don't put it into the hands of competent people who can manage it, it will corrupt. It will spoil. Are we together? Fine. Number two, it stands from greed. So incompetence and greed is always a poor manager. It is a destroyer of what God has graciously given us. When these things happen in a nation, there is poverty. There is lack of development. There is diseases. People go to the premature grave. They die before their time. Because common malaria will not be able to be managed. Because of incompetence and greed. In some nations, particularly in Africa, when a government wins an election, it's not about who is competent. It is about who founded the party and his family members and friends. Check, you check your nose. It is about who has been in this party for a long time. One or Bahache. When you place people like this to manage God's graciously given possessions, sometimes, because they didn't go for the right people, they will not be able to manage it well. What do we do? Corruption is a social danger. It, it facilitates environmental degradation. Corruption destroys nations. It destroys the future. I want you to repeat this after me. It undermines honesty and hard work. You see, when there's corruption, honesty and hard work is of no use. There's, there's no need to work hard and be honest. When people are corrupt and corruption is all around you, what does that mean? And corruption favors just the privileged few. What do we do? I don't know what we should do. But let me read Isaiah 64. And then we will do what Isaiah said we should do. And then I know that God, through that, will meet our nation again. Verse 1. Shall we rise and read this one? Don't think that we should just come to church and say that Maojanumra. It is not enough. Let's take the big things. Let's read together. Oh, Lord, that you will rend the heavens and come down. Say that the mountains will tremble before you mountains of authority if they are not shakeable let God shake the mountains mountains of authority verse 2 as when fire sets trees ablaze and causes water to boil come, come down, down to make your name known to your enemies, enemies. and cause the, the nations to quake before, before you, you. Flat the mountains. Let the nation quake. Shake the land. Mm. Mm. Verse 3. For when, when you, you did, did awesome, awesome things, things that, that we, we did, did not expect, expect. you came, came down, down and the, the mountains, mountains trembled, trembled before, before you. you. 
Let us lift up our hands and say, God, that you will rend the heavens and come down. 63 years, Father, we thank you. We thank you for the peace. We thank you for Ghana. But Lord, come down. Rend the heavens and cause something good to happen to us. Shall we pray for Ghana? Shall we pray? In the name of Jesus. Let us start by thanking him and blessing him. He has done something for us. But we want him to do more. Melt the mountains. Oh God, that you will come down and melt the mountains. Praise and come down, oh Lord. Bless Melt the mountains, Lord. Come down, oh Lord, come down. Don't just sit, open your mouth and talk to God. Talk to God, talk to God concerning this nation. God, come down. Rain the heavens and come down. Let's pray for the presidency. Let's pray for our chiefs. Let's pray for our parliamentarians. Let's pray for all those in the hem of authority. Let's pray for, for attitudinal change in our country. Attitudinal change, hard work, honesty. Let us pray against corruption. This is our nation. And everyone in authority at any particular time, T, we should desire the prosperity of the land. Because in the prosperity of the land, we will also prosper. So put away your party colors. It is about Ghana. Lift your hands up as if you are lifting the country. Let us pray that God prosper this nation. Because in a prosperity, we will also prosper. This is the word of God to Jeremiah and to us. Shall we pray? Shall we lift this nation before God? Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray da, 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 for you. We pray, you pray for the land in the name of Jesus. Roll up by and da 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 we bless Sixty-three years of In Ghana's prosperity, we also prosper. In Ghana's prosperity, we shall also prosper. In Ghana's peace, we shall have peace. Oh, Spirit of the Living God, Rabo Liberi Asan, Forgive us. We are going to pray that God will bring solution and deliverance to the nations of this coronavirus. We are praying that God should wipe it away. He should rend the heavens and come down and wipe the coronavirus away and set his people free. Mm -hmm. If for any reason it is pestilence on us, because of any evil, God should forgive yes, and save the nations. Shall we pray? Father, in the name, Jesus, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we are praying that, Father, you heal this land from the coronavirus. Oh God. Save the nation in the name of Jesus. 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 Save the land in the name of Jesus. Save the land in the name of Jesus. Roll up, Berry and the Rada Bassanda. Berry and the Roba Bolo Berry and the Rada Bassanda. Father, wipe this coronavirus away. In the name of Jesus, wipe it away, O Lord. In the name of Jesus, wipe it away, O Lord. In the name of Jesus, wipe it away, O Lord. Father, you can do it, O God. Wape sanda da da ba sunu, biri anda da da ba sinde katanda, biri anda da da ba biri. Our forebears believed God. And they sang a song that says, Onam Framem Oriene Juma. They believe that God can do these things. He can do it through the wind. We are going to pray again. God, 
wipe the coronavirus away. Jesus. But shall we pray? Shall we pray? Save China. In the name of Jesus, Save Lord. Italy. Save the world. For deliverance. Save Ghana. Save Togo. Save every Lord. land, oh God. Lord. And Father, Wipe we halt this virus. Yeah, we halt its advancement. In the name of Jesus. We, we push it into the abyss. We, plead we push mercy, it into the abyss. We, plead for we mercy, push Lord. it into the abyss. We, mercy, we push Lord. it into the abyss. We mercy, into the bottomless pit, oh God. Wipe it Save away. China. In the name Save of Jesus. I am the Lord of the In the name of Jesus, Lord. In Jesus' name. Shall we shout a big amen? Amen.